Oh my god, the crab mech is real. It's actually a playable, enjoyable thing in Splatoon 3. I, I wanted this so bad, and I'm gonna talk about it now. The new Splatoon 3 trailer took no time at all to shove it in our faces either, so you know that the development team is proud of their funky, crabby creation. You go, dev team. Please, make more stuff like this. Yes. It's also so big compared to the Inklings. Based on the first trailer, I assumed it was going to be at least a little bit bigger than the Inklings, at least height-wise, but no. I'm curious now if the crab will be breakable or not. Anything with that large of a hitbox just kind of feels like it should be. It'll probably depend on how powerful the crab is. The first thing to note is that the crab has at least two ways of firing, and it looks like the mobility of the player changes at least a little bit depending on what they're doing with the crab. We see that the crab can also roll and then shoot a large singular blast. Think of how the Explosher has mortar shots, but it's hard to tell if the mortar blast is associated specifically with the crab roll that the player does beforehand, or if it's separate from that motion. It'd be interesting if you had to roll and then, and only then, could you fire a blast. It could be a way for the opposing team to predict your play a little bit. When the blast is fired, it looks like you can't move around too much for at least a few frames, so you might want to keep that in mind if there's no invincibility frames in the crab mech. Although again, if it is associated with the roll, this could make sense as you move around quite a bit before you fire that blast. If the player can get hit by opponents while riding the mech, there's a question of how easy it'll be to do this. If the player's hurt box is too big, we risk a similar situation that Splashdown currently has in Splatoon 2, where over time, players are just able to get used to where the player character is located on the mech, and then they could just take out the player before, you know, they could do anything. I think it'd be fair if players could easily get taken out from the back more than the front, like the gameplay would imply. You wouldn't want to pop out any particular special in the middle of a firefight, right? Splatoon 1's Bubbler and Kraken made it clear how having Instapop specials could change the tide of a fight way too quickly. How fast does the player get into the crab tank? We don't see any video of any player activating the special, unless I missed that, so we'll have to wait a while for that. If we start in a rolling position, this could be as close to an early frame shielding special that we'll see in the game, similar to how Baller gets popped. Of course, players switching into Baller can still get caught and splatted before they're safely inside. A lot of the gameplay mechanics added to Splatoon 3 seem to prioritize mobility, but the crab mech is doing it right where at least it looks like there's a way to hit the player while they're using the special. This is important because we don't want charger players and other backliners to lose too much viability in Splatoon 3. One of the problems we've seen with Splatoon 2's meta is that charger players have had to deal more and more with shooter players running around everywhere with no sign of it stopping. If we can avoid this in the next game, especially by endgame, it'll let everyone have a lot more fun, regardless of the weapon class they choose to play. On the other hand, it looks like you're able to walk and fire pretty easily while just shooting straight ahead. I don't really want to 1v1 another player while riding the mech, but from afar, this could be great. Do you think you could ride the mech on the tower? <laughs> I always forget how much space there really is if we include the greats. Maybe you just would fall off really easily if you started to move. In fact, do you think the crab will have knockback? I wouldn't be surprised at all if at release the crab doesn't have knockback, but later on it's added in similar to what the development team did for Kraken, where we might have the crab at first not move at all if you shoot at it, and then later on they'll be like, oh, uh, actually now if you shoot at the crab, it backs up, smiley face. The Kraken special from Splatoon 1 originally had very little knockback, allowing it to walk up to opponents and easily take them out, letting them dominate the splat zone, the tower, and really anywhere else they wanted to go. I'm just excited to see how the crab fits into the game. I'm hoping we can use it in the single player mode levels, just so I have an excuse to run around with it. I, I, I mean, to destroy those wacky, genetically modified Yachtlings. Yes! I believe there's confirmation the Clash Blaster has the crab for now, so I, I guess I'm gonna have to be a Clash Blaster main. <laughs> Given the larger amount of time the development team has had for Splatoon 3, it's great to see the potential that this could be able to bring us. All this trailer did was make me feel even more hyped for Splatoon 3, which I didn't think was going to be possible. Ah, we got so much more than just a few crumbs in this trailer. We're winning, guys. I, I can't wait to see more. I'll talk about the trailer as a whole and the story mode and the future in other videos. There's just so much to take in. Thank you for listening.
And please let me know in the comments what your favorite part of the trailer was. I, I, I just, the crab, man, yes, 